Okay. Um, good afternoon. Thanks for all of you uh, coming here today. Uh, very appreciated. Uh, my name is Chen Yixing. I'm from uh, Intel Shanghai, China. And I'm very interested in system architecture, performance, and usability. So everyone here cares about Nova Scheduler, especially about its uh, performance issues and uh, possible uh, optimizations, I think. So I'm here to talk about it. Uh, another thing is I have implemented a, a performance profiling tool for Nova Scheduler measurements. I will prove how useful it is by showing you uh, what I've got. Uh, this presentation is based on 58 rounds of experiments. Uh, they will show how well current Nova Scheduler can perform under the standard one scheduler uh, deployment, which is recommended by uh, the community and uh, the scheduler sub-team. Uh, they will show how well current Nova Scheduler can perform perform under the uh, perform under the standard one scheduler deployment. And uh, if they if you know the performance, you may wonder how to optimize that. Uh, and I will show the uh, existing op options that can break the limit. And of course, they all come with compromises. So I will help you weigh the pros and cons. Uh, I will also finally talk about the uh, future uh, designs of Nova Scheduler that are considered by the community to uh, optimize the performance. Uh, the, all this work takes me about two months. Uh, Take, takes me about two months. I'm a little nervous if, uh, if I can't realize the idea, but uh, it is much more enjoyable uh, when I see the pattern coming out from the result data. So uh, first, some uh, better to know before the main content. Uh, the first is the scheduler architecture, and the second is uh, how to analysis the scheduler based on this architecture, and the third is the how to emulate the uh, real OpenStack deployment uh, to get the accurate result. Uh, so this is the process of Nova Scheduler. Uh, there are four services included: the Nova API, Nova Conductor, Nova CPU, and a Scheduler. The request will be first accepted and checked by Nova API. Then Nova API will send the request to the Nova Conductor. Then Nova Conductor will call Nova Scheduler to get the decision. And the Nova Conductor will send the request to the uh, specific node based on the decision. And when the request comes to Nova Compute, uh, the resource tracker will, be ch will check the, if the available resources can meet the re requirement of the uh, request. If it is successful, the virtual machine will be spawned in this compute node, but if failed, uh, the request will be retried from, again, from the Nova conductor. So this is basically the whole process of, of Nova, uh, Nova Scheduler but there is still an important part here, the database. The scheduler will uh, make their, its decision based on the uh, uh, resource view from database, and it will request all the uh, compute node states uh, uh, during each processing of requests. And if the request is successful in compute node, uh, the uh, resource tracker will update the latest uh, state to the database. And the research tracker will periodically correct the database, uh, maybe in 60, uh, 60 seconds. So I can ca categorize the, uh, the phases uh, into three 
categories. Uh, the first is the pre-scheduling phase that the, the NOVA will accept the request. And the second phase is scheduling. Uh, during this phase, there will be a decision to, uh, to which compute node uh, it will success or it will be failed. And the post scheduling will spawn the, uh, the virtual machine there. So in my analysis, uh, uh, the basic idea is very simple. I fake the uh, post scheduling phase so that there's no real hypervisor needed in my simulation. So I can manage uh, 1,000 compute nodes, uh, uh, launch them in, uh, within 10 seconds to the single machine, and I can manage them very easily. And uh, secondly, all the important services are, are sliced to create point to generate logs. And then all the important calling points, including the uh, conductor calls the scheduler, and the scheduler calls the database, are sliced to generate logs during the real, 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 uh, real scheduling. And after those requests are uh, delivered, uh, then the logs will be passed by state machines implemented by offline passing program to get the results, uh, accurate results from this ROM. So it's a basic idea. And how to better emulate the uh, environment? Uh, I ran all these services, controller services, including NOAA Scheduler, uh, MySQL, and RabbitMQ into the controller server and all the other compute nodes are in a separate compute server so that their performance will not affect the controller. And the only difference between a real OpenStack environment and the simulated one is that uh, the post-scheduling uh, post phase is faked and some network interfaces are faked for convenience. So if you have any concerns about that environment, you can remember the question and ask me later. So this is the main performance uh, of the uh, standard one scheduler deployment uh, under the... Sorry, what's happened? Okay, sorry under the various conditions. Uh, firstly, I only send a tiny request to the, simu to the simulated environment. Uh, this request will be uh, processed from uh, Nova API to Nova Compute, and the log will be passed uh, offline to show the uh, how long each uh, the request will be stayed in each services. So for example, in the left side, in 200 compute node simulation, we can see that uh, this request will be stay in uh, scheduler services for uh, 0.2 seconds, and the whole processing time will be uh, 0.6 seconds and I conducted uh, experiments from 200 uh, compute nodes to 1,000 compute nodes so that we can see the uh, difference there that uh, only the scheduler overhead will be increased by adding more nodes. And the, uh, th that is the scheduler overhead will be uh, increased up to 64% of the entire scheduling. That is very large. And if we, uh, I'm, I'm very curious about uh, how this blue stripe is, uh, what, what, what's inside that blue stripe. So I uh, made further analysis of this. That shows that uh, nearly 60, 90% uh, of the time is uh, 
in the get all host state method. That is exactly why the uh, Nova scheduler tries to refresh the states from database. So uh, it means that cache refresh is a major bottleneck in this simulation and it is blocking the entire scheduler process because the schedule overhead is very large during the entire scheduling. Uh, and you may wonder, uh, uh, what if we, I add some more uh, pressure to this environment, so I uh, send 50, 50 con concurrent requests to the same environment, that the, uh, so that I, you can see that there's a different story. The uh, scheduler, the scheduler overhead is uh, increased by the nodes, and there's also the message processing time is also increased, and it is even larger than the scheduler uh, overhead. Uh, and it is where the conductor sends the request to scheduler, and uh, be between the scheduler uh, accepts these requests. Uh, that's very strange that, uh, that it is bigger, and uh, I, ha I investigate that because the scheduler has a uh, limited bandwidth there, so that uh, exceed that more requests that exceeded that the scheduler com capacity will be blocked before the scheduler. That's where the yellow one lies. So that I also take the weight weight phase into consideration. That the so that the scheduler overhead will be up to. Uh, 91%, that's even bigger than the previous uh, experiments. And I also uh, investigate the scheduler service is that the cache refresh over bottleneck is even larger. It is up to 98.5%. Uh, so it strengthened my idea uh, my conclusion that the cache refresh is a bottleneck of entire scheduling. And there's a new metric to measure the performance of scheduling, that's the throughput. It means that uh, how many requests can be proceeded uh, in one second of this environment, it is uh, decreased to one point uh, 08 queries per second in the 1,000 node simulation. And we can see that there is a difference between this first experiment and the second experiment that the performance will be uh, different uh, of uh, different concurrency. So I also did a third round of experiment to uh, you can see the, in this diagram that the leftmost is the first experiment that I only send one request there, and the, the right side is that 50 requests I conducted in the second experiment, and I fill all the requests between them, I can, then I can draw this diagram. The first significant thing that is the scheduler overhead is increased and then it will be steady. Uh, when the this, when scheduler overhead is steady and the uh, message weight will be significantly uh, increased. So I call this the saturated scheduling. Uh, and we can, and also the API overhead will be uh, increased by concurrency and also uh, it proves my conclusion if I extend the request to 200 concurrency that the uh, schedule overhead will, be not, will not be increased. So this schedule overhead, uh, including the weight overhead, will be increased to 88% in this experiment. And if we look into the scheduler service, we can see the obvious uh, saturation there. Uh, 
and the cash refresh overhead is uh, will be increased to 98% before the saturation, and after the saturation, this will be uh, become steady, the, the cash refresh overhead. And there's another analysis to see whether the scheduler performance will be changed by the concurrency, and the answer is no. The performance will be uh, 2.7 queries per second after saturation. So if you think it is complicated, so I, I will summarize that uh, the current schedule process is like a pipeline, and uh, it can be saturated by requests. The thinnest part is the NOAA scheduler service. So, the, uh, so more, if there are more requests exceeding the capacity, they will be piled up before scheduled services. And the schedule overhead of in entire scheduling is up to 90%. It will be grow by adding nodes and adding pressure. And the cache refresh overhead will be steady at uh, 98%. So it means that the bottleneck is cache refresh from database, and the performance of the entire simulation is 4.3 4 to 1.1 requests per second. Uh, if we know about the NOVA schedule performance, we may wonder how to improve uh, that performance if we not sat satisfied with that. So we have three choices there. The first one is to add in more schedulers, obviously. And secondly, we can add more workers of Nova API and Nova Conductor. And the third choice is to change to another uh, scheduler called the caching scheduler. Uh, if we add more uh, filter schedulers, we can see first uh, significant thing is that the weighted messages will be f uh, consumed by multiple schedulers. So it causes the scheduler overhead decreased to uh, 70%, and it will result in faster query time of, uh, of one query processing. And, mm, but the, this diagram also shows that uh, not, it's not true that more schedulers means uh, the, perf the better performance. And we can also see the performance, the throughput improvement is up to 300%. But the cons is that uh, the, scheduler, the, sched uh, the multiple scheduler decisions will be collided with each other uh, that they, uh, if there are 16 schedulers, all of their decisions will be collided into three compute nodes, and it result in, even result in retries uh, in the first picture, and uh, finally, finally result in the uh, performance overhead. And if we have more workers uh, at this picture. We can see there is uh, very little difference here. Only thing we can see the pattern here is that the API uh, cost is uh, slightly decreased, but other things are not. Um, so, the left choice, the only left choice is caching scheduler. Uh, as we can see in the filter scheduler experiments that the uh, largest overhead is the uh, cache refresh overhead. And what if the cache refresh overhead is eliminated so that, um, so it is what caching scheduler is doing, that it only uh, reads the cached uh, states, and it, not, it, it won't read database during uh, uh, request processing. So we can see the result is 
the performance boost is very significant that the uh, left, the new diagram's uh, the scale, scaling is only one-fifth of the filter scheduler scaling. And it means uh, if the bottleneck removed, one request can be uh, up to eight times faster. It's in 1,000 node simulation. It will be the fastest. So uh, the, using the caching scheduler, it will minimize the schedule overhead and the faster query, uh, faster query and even the uh, best throughput in improvement up to 800%, but there are still cons there that uh, the filter, uh, the caching scheduler only updates its uh, resource view only updates its resource view periodically uh, 60, 60 seconds by default, so that it always, uh, it means that it always have an outdated res resource view there. So it will affect the placement accuracy if the resources is uh, constantly changed by deleting instances or migrations uh, in the compute nodes and uh, you may not want to uh, launch multiple schedulers there, of course. And I also visualize, uh, uh, profile, profile the schedule process uh, in each uh, choices. And as you can see in the first graph that if the scheduler is uh, processing 50 requests, it will cost nearly uh, 20 seconds to complete all the requests. And th those requests will be first stacked in the Nova API. Then they will be wait in the message processing for the scheduler to process all of them in a very slow speed. And if we change to four filter schedulers, uh, this performance will be uh, boosted because the schedule bandwidth is increased, but the scheduler overhead w uh, is still very large. And if we change to the caching scheduler, we can see that uh, there's, uh, we can barely see the uh, scheduler overhead there, and the uh, request will be uh, consumed in a very fast speed, and the new overhead will be in uh, Nova API. So the optimization strategies is uh, if we can optimize the database, and uh, it is the most effective choice, but it is uh, a little di uh, difficult to have a much better performance. And uh, the second choice is to use caching scheduler. It has uh, the best uh, performance uh, improvement, uh, but it, we can, uh, it is a bad choice to uh, bring up multiple schedulers, and it will always have an outdated resource view. Uh, if we can't uh, tolerate that, we can choose more, more filter schedulers, and it, it will be uh, also a better performance there. The last choice is to add more workers. It uh, will have the least performance because in my investigation, uh, current Nova filter scheduler will be directly connected to the database uh, without a conductor. So that, that's why uh, if we add more conductors, the performance will, be, will not be uh, boosted that much. So we know the performance there, but uh, how we can do as developers to improve the scheduler. So uh, the first thing of the 
feature scheduler that we want to uh, improve is that the, the largest overhead. We have three choices. The first one is to improve database, and the second one is to optimize this uh, database query method of the implementation, or the third one is to uh, totally exclude the database. That's the three choices, and the first one is uh, we, we can change to memory-based database, and second one, there is a resource provider scheduler uh, in the future, and the third one is the shared state scheduling. And if the largest bottleneck is uh, solved, and then we can change to optimize normal API, and then the uh, post scheduling is also very important. Uh, I can introduce some of uh, the future implementation, some of the intro, uh, uh, future scheduling design, but I will not go into details because they are still in consideration. The first one is the resource provider scheduler. Uh, it will not, ref uh, in this design, the resource provider scheduler will not refresh all the whole states from database. Instead, it will do the filtering inside the database and uh, uh, query the least whole states as possible to increase the performance. And the shared state scheduler will directly receive incremental updates from the compute nodes so that the, the, uh, the database is, uh, 100, is excluded. So um, if you want to uh, know more about NOVA scheduler performance, you can uh, see all the NOVA scheduler benchmarking data in this link. And you can also, uh, if you are very curious about risk, risk conditions, you can see one scheduler risk problem discussion there. And the shared state scheduler, the sort provider scheduler, the details are in these links. Um, you can also try this tool in your environment, and you can optimize your environment to see uh, if there are differences there. And you can ask me uh, if you met problems. If you have no test environment, you can also try OC cluster if you got good ideas. And if you want to contribute code to NOAA Scheduler, you can attend to the uh, Scheduler sub-team uh, sub meeting in, uh, in bi-weekly. So uh, finally, uh, I will thank Jing Ming Tong, Zhou Zhen Zhan, and Liu Junwei to, uh, for their su support. Uh, so uh, that's all of my presentation. Do you have questions of this experiment? Yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, no deal from Zero Stack. So can you go back to your slide number 19? Just wanted to know what you're highlighting there. 18, okay. One nine, please. So you had this matrix, yeah. So yeah, the next one. Next one. The first matrix, you have one, two, eight, 12, and 16. Yeah. Is the eight the number of API workers you recommend, or why it isn't purple? Oh, sorry, it's not one, two, it's two, four. It's some mistake there. And the eight is, uh, is orange because the typical, uh, the default setting in my environment is eight, so that the previous experiments are all have eight workers. And where is your previous experiment then? See, I have conducted three sets of experiments. The like the, the, the this, one requests, okay. one requests, and uh, various nodes, and 50 requests with 200 to 1,000 nodes, and uh, one to 200 concurrent <laughs> requests in 400 nodes. That's the three experiments in my presentation. Okay, well, I will take a look. So that's basically uh, across slides, like slide 18, 
19, that purple line means connection between all those experiments, right? It's not something you recommend as maximum number of API. Well, but I did get answer. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you. Do I, I apologize if this is a newbie question. When you talk about caching, where yeah. does that cache reside? Uh, cache means scheduler cache. The scheduler will uh, make its decisions based on its cache. Is it a, you mean on that CPU? I mean, what, I mean, does CPU technology make a difference in terms of the performance? Uh, no, uh, you mean uh, how caching scheduler will improve the performance? Right, but you say cache, it has to cache somewhere, right? Yeah, it, it makes its cache in the scheduler memory. Oh, so it's, so it's in regular? Yeah, it's in memory cache. Okay. Yeah. I think your confusion was processor cache here. Is that what you meant? Did, did your previous question, did you mean processor cache? Yeah, yeah, real memory, like memcached kind of stuff that Keystone uses and things like that. Okay. So you can have an in-memory cache. Okay. Thank you. Yingxian, people might be curious to know if there's any forward path for this in Nova, any chance of this awesome scheduler optimizations being implemented? Yeah, there's uh, two scheduler I have uh, introduced. The one is the resource provider scheduler, uh, which is uh, proposed by JPipes, and another is the shared scheduler, shared state scheduler proposed uh, design. Uh, I have designed that they will be uh, considered in the community so that you can look forward to them. Yeah, uh, not it again. So this just, is just to get your view. Uh, I do have an answer partial, but I want to listen to uh, your opinion. So when you have this lack, data synch asynchronized, like you have this uh, cached uh, state, and now you said uh, if it is one minute behind or one second behind, the, the state you get from the database or cached one will be older. Yeah. It's not up to date. Yeah. So now that means if you are highly provisioned, uh, you might, the scheduler might say, I'm able to allocate, but after one minute, you will discover that it's not able to allocate because all yes. resources are consumed. Yeah. So how would you eliminate it? Like, is it okay to tell users, oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, cache is um, still, or do you tune it, or do it something on high concurrency request? I'm not asking for definitive answer, but uh, curious to know your thoughts. Thanks. So you mean that if the uh, resources is not available in compute nodes, what will happen? Correct. But before coming to know this, you already told the user that you will be able to place this ABMs in the nodes. No, uh, the scheduler will not tell the user that the, this decision, whether this decision is successful. Only the uh, VM is spawned in this compute node then the, its state will become the spawning then active. Then your API time does not decrease then? Yeah, the because API you... will uh, directly return that, this, that VM is in scheduling, but it will not, the API will not show whether it is successful. You, may, you must uh, use Nova list or Nova show to query that. But it won't show. It will not show on Nova list because it's not provisioned. It's on uh, spawning it, state. It's in the database record. I see. Yeah. Okay, so what we are getting is end-to-end -end VM provisioning time is not decreasing, but the decision making from scheduled phase to spawning is decreasing. Yeah. What is not really meaningful from the operator perspective. Is that roughly right? Yeah, it means that the scheduling time is increased not the API uh, return time. 
at least scheduling time did not decrease, right? Because you are still waiting to VM to get allocated, get the latest uh, state. Yeah. Okay, and your optimization? Yeah, I, I think I got answered. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'd like to add one comment. Scheduling time does decrease because he'll have the state of all the resources in memory. You're not going. Today's Nova scheduler makes several round trips to the database to get the state of the resources. So that's definitely decreased. And your other comment about what's happening in a cloud that's already you know, pretty crowded with lots of VMs, it's going to be hard especially to find in that scenario for any scheduler. So I can anticipate that maybe your scheduling approach should change depending on how utilized your cloud is. Like, if you have like five concurrent schedulers, it might have to dynamically adapt, adapt there and say maybe I have to drop to one or two so there's less uh, conflicts type of stuff. So that could be a part of it, depending on how crowded the cloud is. So any more questions? Well, uh, I want to ask, uh, ask two questions. Yeah. Uh, first, uh, in your experiment, were, uh, what, uh, what are the scheduling mechanism do you, did you use? Uh, what do you mean the schedule mechanism? Do you mean the filter schedule, uh, yeah, the filters yeah, the filter. and wires? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they are all the diff default settings uh, so, using dev stack. Okay, so you uh, did, uh, did not do any work to op optimize the, the filter? Yeah, no, no optimizations. They are all the okay. original open stack. Okay, uh, the second uh, question is, uh, how do you measure the scheduling collision? Measure? How, how do you measure the, uh, the scheduling collision if you use uh, catch, uh, catching scheduler? Uh, the collision, um, uh, it is based on the logs. I can see from logs that this decision is made to uh, which node. And then if it failed, I can even back to logs to see the, uh, what it, when it is retried. And the second decision is made on where. So I can collect all these to see the, how many nodes are there. Did you analyze the uh, impact, uh, the impact of a collision on the uh, on your experiment result? Uh, no, but uh, every collision that uh, every retry will cause an uh, entire scope from node conductor to scheduler to uh, con compute node, and we can. Uh, we can calculate that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. He did see the impact of collisions, and in fact, the collisions were reduced because the period between capturing the resource usage and then the scheduling to the resource, that, that window decreased, so there were less collisions. There was that slide with the collisions if you want to show him. Okay. Is this this one? Collisions to seven compute nodes. And it will cause retries in the first diagram and will finally cause the throughput decreased. Hey, um, I, I was curious on the, the query to get all hosts from the database that, that slows down the scheduler. Is, yeah. that, is that on a per project basis, or, or um, do, will that slow down if you have lots of VMs in a completely separate project as well? Separate projects. Uh, so, like, if you have a if if, if you have an open stack that ha that has uh, multiple tenants or projects, yeah, um, will will it slow down based on how many uh, VMs are in all of your projects, or just limited to that one project? Uh, uh, no, the uh, scheduling de uh, design is that it will query all the compute nodes. 
it will not based on the uh, projects or tenants. Okay. It will always query all, all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.